Now, Harry Dunn's parents have lost their high court battle against the Foreign Office over whether their son's alleged killer had diplomatic immunity. In 2019, Harry died when his motorcycle was in a crash uh, with a car near RAF Crowton in Northamptonshire. However, the suspect, Anne Sekoulis, later left for the United States, citing diplomatic immunity. It's always been a point of contention. Sekoulas, whose husband worked at the RAF base, was charged with causing death by dangerous driving in December, but an extradition request was denied earlier this year. Let's speak with Rad Seeger, who's the Dunn family spokesperson, and also Harry Dunn's mother, Charlotte Charles, who's back with us on the programme. Charlotte, good to have you with us, and, and sorry it's under these circumstances, um, although I noticed from the comments you've made so far that you don't sense that all is lost at the moment. No, not at all, um, and thanks for having me. We um, we have been disappointed. It has been upsetting. Um, we've had our tears and we've had our tantrums, but our feet are firmly planted back on the ground, and... Um, yeah, I've got a I've got a new set of boxing gloves out. The yeah. ones I've been using for the last fifteen months are a little bit worn, um, but here we go again. You know, yeah. they, they you know the FCO may feel that they've won round one and that we've lost. We don't see it that way. Um, we've got a long way to go, but it's by no means over. And Rad, just explain what was going on here. What was uh, what, what was the contention? What was the Foreign Office's position? How did this get to court? Ian, good afternoon. Good afternoon to your to your listeners. This dispute is all around whether or not Anne Sekoulis had diplomatic immunity at the time of the crash. We know that the the director of public prosecutions has determined that she did not have diplomatic immunity, and that's why he charged her. Um, our legal advice is very clearly that she did not have diplomatic immunity, but the government are are in a different place, and they. They decided that she did have diplomatic immunity, and that's why they allowed her to leave last year. So, as always in this country, we try and resolve our disputes um, privately. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, you go to court. This court, the High Court, decided that Anne Sekoulis did have diplomatic immunity. But as Charlotte has just said, this is not the end. This is just the beginning. Uh, this is this is round one, and the parents have already lodged a, a an appeal. And up we, up we go to the Court of Appeal. And Charlotte, incredibly confusing because the DPP, the last time I looked, is, you know, part of the government system, as it were. Uh, they made one conclusion, but the very same government came, came to a different one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Max Hill's been amazing. You know, he, he's a QC. He's always been under the impression that she did not have diplomatic community. If she had have had it, if she, he wouldn't have been able to charge her in the December. He wouldn't have been able to put out the red Interpol notice in, I think it was May this year. Yep. Forgive me for being a bit blurred. We've had a lot going on. Um, you know, he is very much of the impression that she did not and was not covered. And our legal team are right with him on that. Therefore, we're right with them. You know, it's not just us and our legal team that have that view. It's our own DPP. Yep. You know, so the, the government are wrong. And yeah. we will get there and we will prove that. Uh, and, and Rad, just, I mean, remind us if you can, uh, on what basis would Anne Sekoulis, the spouse of somebody who worked at an RAF base, on what basis do they argue she would have diplomatic immunity? Very, it's a very complicated legal position, but doing the best I can to simplify the, 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 the government's case <clears throat> is that when her husband Jonathan was uh, arrived in the country um, with somebody who had diplomatic immunity, the dependents automatically get immunity as well. So the difference in this case was that under, uh, under uh, legal agreements that were entered into back in the 90s between the two governments, Jonathan's um, immunity as a as a personnel of the United States State Department, he had his immunity pre-waived. So he, if had he killed Harry that night, he would not have had immunity, and he would have um, been prosecuted and, and presumably wow. ended up in jail. Now, what happened in these agreements was that although they specifically and expressly waived immunity for the personnel, the word dependents or family members were not inserted into that agreement. 
So opportunistically, the United States government have spotted that anomaly, that loophole, and said, unless that immunity is expressly waived, um, you're covered. So, I, you know, you can hear, I've, I've had to torture myself to, to get it into a position to explain that to your yeah. viewers and listeners. But that is effectively the government's position. It's never been tested in court before, Ian. And that's why, you know, we're very respectful of this court. We're very expect, respectful of our opponents, um, the, the, you know, the government's lawyers. This shouldn't really be a fight. It's never been tested before, Ian. And that's why we're going right up to the highest court in the mm. land. And Charlotte, explain what happens. You have the right of appeal after this, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And that, that paperwork is already underway. Um, you probably know us pretty well by now. We don't we don't hold back on anything, and we don't um, we don't hesitate much. You know, every we've always always got a plan B, and we were ready and raring to go. So that paperwork's there. Court of appeal already in place. And I guess what will disturb many people about this, Charlotte, is why would the government want to set out to emphatically establish that this woman has diplomatic immunity? You might think, if you were an outsider from another planet, that it would be the other way around. Yeah, we, we have got still got so many questions and I'm not sure if we're ever going to get the real truth from the government as to why they are choosing to put us through this. But you know, 15 months of sheer torture, you know, we should not under any circumstance be sat here in 21st century Britain allowing someone to kill and walk away. Yeah. Immunity or not, it is not there for that. It doesn't cover them for that. And 15 months on, we are still trying to come to terms with the fact that so far, it won't continue, but so far she has been able to walk away. It's it's barbaric. It's it's not it's not right. Never has been. Never will be. Yeah, uh, and I mean, and Rad on on that point. Um, the last time certainly we spoke with Charlotte, there was a sort of hope that the change in administration in the states might have some bearing on this. But one has to reasonably assume that this stage in the British courts would 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 be what is needed first to establish the lack of diplomatic immunity. Look, we're look, Ian, you know, we're we're going down both channels, you know, but but this will be resolved politically and diplomatically. And Ian, you know, you know, I've been on with you before. The dialogue with Washington and in London, frankly, continues. It was a major boost for this campaign um, to um, see the result of the general election in the United States. Um, it's not about politics, but we fundamentally believe that. Um, Joe Biden is a far more decent human being. And importantly, we saw the nomination of a guy called Tony Blinken as the new Secretary of State yesterday. He is a passionate believer in human rights and in, he believes in international alliances. Uh, I, you know, I, I can't promise your listeners and viewers anything, but we are extremely hopeful that the incoming administration will, will view this in a completely different light. And Ian, just to pick up on a point, you just said it is not dependent on whether Anne Sakuvis ultimately is found to have diplomatic immunity or not, because we think this administration coming in will will see will see what, what as what Charlotte just said. You know, if you have diplomatic immunity and you want to play that card, you know, do it in a hotspot country where maybe your own life or the life of your family is in danger because of you know you're in a, yeah. a, a lawless country. Yeah, even if we all agree that Ansakubis had diplomatic immunity, this is not what it's to be used for. And just let me remind you what this is all about. This is a totally innocent family who had the most loving, beautiful son who lost his life through no fault of his own. And I think that's what's really touched the nation and millions of people around the world. Sure. We're all scratching our heads wondering why we're even in this situation. And, and Charlotte, just a final point. I mean, we use that word and we spoke about this before, that word closure. Uh, yeah. But it, 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 I guess it is that, isn't it? That, you know, it, it, nothing is going to bring Harry back. Nothing will ever stop you remembering your lovely son on a daily basis for the rest of time. But you do, one has to reasonably assume, need this moment to, to change in order to at least 
seal off this element of this tragic story? Yeah, completely. You know, everyone deserves closure and every person deserves their justice and Harry does deserve his justice and we deserve our closure. You know, we're, like you say, we're never going to ever be able to forget Harry. You know, our lives are forever changed. Things are never, ever going to be normal ever again. Sure. Every day is still extremely painful. But without our trial, without Anne Seculis coming back here, we can't even have our inquest. We still do not know the last hour or two of Harry's life, what he went through. His, he, even all of his injuries we're not aware of yet. And yeah. As a set of parents, we need to know. We need that jigsaw puzzle. And without those pieces put together, we cannot begin to try and rebuild our lives. Indeed. Um, Charlotte, thank you. Rad, thank you too. Um, it's always good to speak to to both of you on this um, in, in the sense that, I mean, these, com these are interviews that you think it would be a, a better world if you never had to have conversations like this. But... Uh, I, I'm always more than delighted to be able to speak to Charlotte and to Rad, the, the, the spokesman for the family, if at any, it, it, at any level it, it raises even more the profile of such an obvious, overtly tragic case that looks, is begin, it's beginning to look at this word miscarriage of justice. At the moment, there is a miscarriage of justice going on, clearly demonstrably by any legal level, ethical standard you want to select. I don't think anybody could seriously disagree with that, could they? Uh, and we will speak again to them um, to find out the progress on that appeal from the High Court decision. That's Charlotte Charles, Harry, Dun Harry Dunn's mother, and Rad Seeger, the Dunn family spokesman too.